Amen, amen. For the rest of my life, I will serve the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say, the song didn't say, if you do things for me. Yeah. If you take care of me. It says, for the rest of my life. I'll serve the Lord. And then he went on to say, for your glory, I would do anything yeah. just to see you yeah. and behold you as my king. Got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Uh, we're going to be reading from Joel chapter 1 today. Right. Joel chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 4. And then uh, verses um, 14 and 15. Uh, Joel chapter 1. Uh, before that, we'll come from a word from the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you're doing. I'm just excited about your word on today, dear God. Help us through this pandemic, oh God. Help us to understand that everything that we go through is for a reason. So, dear God, help us. And keep us in your son Jesus' name we pray. And bring this word from on high, not from me, but from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, the word of Joel says, The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Bethuel. Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days? or even in the days of your fathers. Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What the chewing locusts left, the swarming locusts left, the swarming locusts uh, left, the crawling locusts has eaten, and what the crawling locusts left, the consuming locusts has eaten. Uh, verse 14, declare a holy fast Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Verse 15, alas for the day for the Lord uh, for, of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Handling a, pan, uh, a plague of devastation. That's our title for today. Handling a plague of devastation. In 1915, in the cities of Israel and Syria, a swarm of locusts consumed the land that was uh, in front of them. They were, there were so many locusts, they actually blocked out the sun. The female locusts began to lay eggs, some hundreds at a time. Immediately turned into 65 to 75,000 eggs. And although the newborn locusts could not fly, they began to crawl and devour all the crops and the things in front of them and around them. And let us look at the current situation of today, the pandemic. The pandemic today has caused so much pain. It has caused a loss of life. It has caused the hospitals uh, to be overwhelmed. Nurses and doctors have become overwhelmed. And it has caused so many uh, financial ruins in America. Even households don't, uh, don't have the money and the food that they need because people are so scared that they go stack up on stuff that they really don't need. But we have to remember God always is in the midst. He always has a plan. So we must trust in the Lord. And so we got to look at this. The, the prophet, the prophet uh, Joel is described uh, uh, in that time in the, in the temporary day. He knew that there was going to be uh, suffering in the land. He knew that, that, that the plague was coming. And, and just imagine, I, I don't know about you, but uh, imagine uh, there were plagues that, that Moses had to deal with, with the frogs and then with, with the blood and the water and all these things. And, and even when they put the, the blood on the door, when, when, the, when the souls were taken, Every time there's a plague, God is always in the midst. No matter what devastating things you go through, there were always uh, plans in the midst that God had already uh, brewed up. And so when I thought about this and I even read up on it a little bit more last night, there were four phases. There were four phases in which this devastation came. The first phase was uh, the, the palmer worm. The palmer worm is, is in Hebrew is called gazam, which is to gnaw. It is a stage in which the locust first hatched and is uh, characterized by its gnawing activity. 
The second phase uh, is the actual locus, and it's in the Hebrew, it's called Arbian. Uh, that's many. It's the most common name for locust, and it's the second stage in which the locust gets his wings and fly. So imagine a locust, and you see one or two here around every once in a while, but imagine so many up in the sky that they all block out the sun. So that, that means there's hundreds of thousands of locusts flying in the air that there's so many that the sun can't even shine through. That's, that's what the locusts mean. The, second, the, the third thing is the canker worm. The canker worm is in Hebrew is called a yell leg. It's to lick off. That, that means that their, their job, they're not flying. They just own the plants and they're licking off the substance. It, it is a stage with destructive work. So what, what was a healthy plant, what was a healthy vine is now nothing because the canker worm has to lick things off. And then the last stage that, that we go through is called the caterpillar stage. In Hebrew, it's called to seal, to devour and to consume everything in its sight. It is the final stage in which the locust reaches its full growth and devours everything in its path. And, and this speaks uh, of the famine and tremendous magnitude. This is speaking of the locusts that devour the entire crop, the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar. There are stages of things that happen in our lives. Yeah. And so we've got to look at it. As Joel is looking at it, and he's trying to tell the elders, us older folks and, and, and some of the younger folks in generations to come, this is what happened. These things are messed up. And even as we go through this uh, situation with our own pandemic uh, uh, of everything that we're going through with the coronavirus, there are stages to this thing. And we got to be careful not to live in fear of it, because if we live in fear of it, that's not of God. we got to have faith over fear that no matter how the coronavirus tries to, to uh, take us out, it's only God is going to have a final say so. There are many people that have lived and there are many people who have died after getting and, and contracting the coronavirus. So we got to listen to what God has to say to us. Listen to him in the midst of everything that's going on because he understands that in a pandemic, there are going to be some trials. There are going to be some temptations. There's going to be some heartaches. There's going to be some pain and there's going to be some financial woes. There are so many people today that do not have jobs because of this pandemic. Kids are going to end up staying at home because we thought that, if, that this thing was going to be gone in April. Then we thought it was going to be gone in May. Then we thought it was going to be gone in June and July. And here we are almost to August and this thing is getting worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we just don't believe it. And it's because people of God have not believed in, in what God says. Yeah, I, I can make the impossible possible. I can bring healing to the land. I, I can do all things, and we need to believe, I can do all things through Christ. What? That strengthens me. Yeah. And so we've got to trust in the Lord and never doubt, and he will surely bring us out. So no matter what we're going through in this pandemic, God's going to bring us out. The first thing I want to talk about is, uh, for us to do, is listen to God. The word tells us in Joel, and give ear all inhabitants of the land. You know what that means? That means for, uh, we, uh, we need to listen to what God uh, is saying. Understand his will. Keep close to God. Understand that he's trying to get us through this thing, and we got to trust him no matter what we're going through. That yes, it's a pandemic. Yeah, we're going through these things, but we got to give an ear to God. In Psalms 86, it says, it says to bend down. David tells God, bend down your ear. We're going through something. We need God to bend down his ear right now. Hear me, oh God. Hear my cry. The world is crying out. The world wants things to change. And, and the world says, I, God, we're tired of this pandemic. I want to get back to my normal life. And God said, I gave you our normal life. Y'all just didn't listen. I gave you everything that you needed. You just did not listen to me. You didn't take heed to my word. You, you, you went in my churches and you made a mock of me. You, you, you made the church all about you. You made, the, made life all about you. And so now you, got, you don't have nothing. Either you depend on man or you depend on me. Yeah. And so right now we got to depend on God. We got to ask God, bend down your ear to me. Just like in song that said, God, hear my cry. God, you are my refuge. You, you're everything that I need. David went through so many things in Psalms that, that we, can, we can pick up everything from David. David went from being a king to a murderer to a, a, a adulterer to everything that you could think of. But yet he still was one of God's chosen servants. So what makes us any different? We mess up. We fall down. But then we can get back up again. All we got to do is trust in the Lord and never doubt. He will bring us out. But we got to trust him. 
We have to trust him. The second thing I want to talk about, it says, tell all generations. That, that's what the second thing is about. Tell all the generations. That means from, from this point on, tell every generation. Let your children tell their children and their children and uh, another generation what the chewing locusts left. If you've been out in a field or if you've seen bugs that crawl around outside, when they, when they leave a certain place, they leave little holes in leaves. And so just imagine hundreds of thousands of these locusts doing this into a field where the land becomes desolate. It's so, it's so bad that even the animals, the, the, uh, the cows and the sheep don't even have them to graze off of. God has to teach us sometimes about how, how bad we need him and, 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 trust, and we need to trust in him. But sometimes we become so powerful amongst ourselves. I got a new house. I got a new car. I got a new job. I really don't need to go to church right now. I really don't need God right now. But God says, what, what about your life experiences? What, what, what about the devastation that comes in your life? Everybody has some type of life experience as they get older. A lot of us say, uh, uh, a lot of us say, well, I, I'm ready to get out of my parents' house and I'm ready to go live on my own until you got to pay that first note. Until you got to, uh, until you got to get, uh, put that food in the refrigerator and there's nothing left. That, 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 it becomes devastating when you have nothing left. And then imagine somebody that had everything and now they're living in their car. Yeah. Imagine somebody that is, uh, had everything and then now they're living on the streets. Circumstances come, uh, life hits you hard. And we need to help those who are lost, help those who are broken. Uh, and God wants us to hear him and then he wants us to, to experience life, but he wants to experience life with him. Just like Noah did. That, that you got to trust God. It, 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 God, you want me to build a boat in the middle of a desert where there's no water? Trust me. Moses, you, you want me to lead these people that, that mumbling and complaining and none of them are grateful for anything you do? They're building golden arts and cows and all these things. They're worshiping everything but you. Still trust me. Still trust. Same thing with Joshua. Now you want me to take over what Moses left out. These people didn't listen to Moses. What make you think they're going to listen to me, God? Trust him. Being locked up in jail. Look, look at Daniel in the lion's den. Well, okay, God, you, you want me to really trust you and I'm about to be thrown in here with lions. Think about the three Hebrew boys. They, they're sitting in, they're sitting in uh, and wouldn't bow down to the king and then Nebuchadnezzar and then all of a sudden they're thrown into a fiery pit. The pit was so hot that when the, even the guards burned up throwing them in. So imagine how God can make the impossible possible. You just got to trust him. No matter what pandemic, no matter what life experiences, sometimes sometime people want you to bow down to him and it ain't time for you to bow down. It ain't time for you to bow. God wants you to love him no matter what you're going through. So you got to trust him and never doubt. He's going to bring you out. It, it just doesn't seem like it is because w you got to go through. You got to go through the storm. You got to go. You got to get through the, uh, through the eye so you can see the center of the calmness. I, I thought about that the other day. I said, God, I just need my own study and I need to, and I need my own peace. And I, uh, I can so I can be quiet and hear you. And God said, sometimes you got to be distracted so that you can get a better understanding how it feels when you're at peace. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, sometimes when you when you by yourself, you don't really think well. You don't really see what God really has for you until you got to get really close to him. And you know why? Because when, when everything around you is going and distracting you, now I got to lean on God even closer. Now, now I got to look at God and say, God, I know you can pull me through this. I, I see everything going on around. I hear all the noise. I hear things clanging and clicking and all this stuff. And God said, pay attention to me. Listen to me, because all the life experiences that you go through, you want to tell your children about it and to tell their children about it. And it keeps going and so forth and so on to tell the generations for years to come. Yes, the locusts devoured the field. Yes. You, you know what? what I thought, God, thank you, God. Go outside and burn your grass and, and, and watch how pretty when after you burn that grass, it looks so black. But watch how when it comes back. Yeah. It looks devastating. It looks horrible when the ground is all black and, and crudded and all that type of stuff. But when, 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 when God creates something new, it becomes back. It comes back even more beautiful than it was the first time. Sometimes when you go through your devastation, it, it looks bad at the point in time. It looks like it's not going to come through. But God said, I'm going to make this thing beautiful, beautiful so that you can tell everybody yeah. about what you went through. You can tell everybody how bad it was. But now it's gotten better. 
The last thing I want to talk about the, the, uh, is the Lord, the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. And one thing that the world is not thinking about is uh, the fasting and praying. We, we have to fast and pray. If we want things to move, we want things to be get better. We got to learn how to fast and pray. Uh, verse 14 says, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the land to, to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. We, we got to learn how to cry out to God. We got to learn how to say, God, I need you. There was an old song, I need thee, oh, I need thee. God, I need you every hour, every second, every minute. I need you, God. There are some things that we go through. The fast was used to show the Lord uh, uh, the sincerity of prayer, uh, uh, being uh, the sincerity of the prayer being prayed. We have to understand that we got to be sincere in our prayer. Anybody can pray. Anybody can read the scripture. It's about us. Learning how to pray and being being true to God. God, God, I want you to assemble us and make us make us uh, hear uh, make us hear your word by by singing and praying and giving us praise. That's how God wants us to become better. The day of the Lord is coming. We got to understand that, that that when He comes, we all gonna have to get ready. It don't matter how bad you messed up, who did what. Well, I you you can't say God, I, I sin because of this person. Because judgment day is all about you. Yeah. It's all about you. So fasting and praying is how we're going to get out of this pandemic. Fasting and praying is how we're going to get our families back together. Fasting and praying is how we're going to get our children back into uh, school safely. This is a call for prayer for all inhabitants of the land to reach God. The leaders and the minister will, are the ones that God are looking at. We, we got to be true leaders. And you might say, I'm not a leader. Yes, yes, you are. If you are one of Christ's uh, 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 service, you're a leader. You're a leader in your own right, your own way. We just got to follow the scripture. No matter what tragedies you have in your life, they're, they're for loved ones, divorce, family issues, losing your job, or even sometimes when you feel at your worst and you feel worthless, God is hearing you because he understands there's going to be a judgment day. There's going to be some problems. But God, all you got to do is trust him. In, time, in, in times like these, we need to put down our phones. We need to put, uh, turn off the TV and, and get off the social media site and talk to God. Take 30 minutes. Take four, uh, four hours, six hours, whatever you got to do, and fast and pray to God. And speak over your life. Speak over your life for healing, financial needs, and all the things that God has for you in your day. Because the word says, alas, for the day, for the Lord, uh, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come in destruction. The day of the Lord is speedily approaching. Uh, unless sinners repent. We got to repent. How many of us truly repent for our, uh, uh, our sins? We, we, I, I've been in, in situations in my life and I'm like, God, I done messed up and, 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 and I haven't prayed to you and I haven't did everything I'm supposed to do. Now I need your help. And like, God's like, I've been here the whole time. Why'd you stop praying? Why? Because I didn't answer you when you wanted me to. Why? Why? Because you didn't get the money you wanted. You didn't get the things that you needed. God says, I've been here the whole time. You the one walked away. We got to remember that, that, that these things that come in our life, sometimes they come in our life just so we, it can bring us closer to God. Know that he is able. Know that we live in a world where people have stopped trusting in God and start trusting in themselves. The, uh, and, and then it brought me to this story about the prodigal son. As I get ready to try to end this thing, it brought me to the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son is one who gets everything from his father and leaves because, you know, we think we grown. We, 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 we heard what the parents said. We did everything that they told us to do while we were growing up. But now, God, now you know, we feel like, God, I just want to move out on my own. I, I want to do my thing and do what I want to do. And then, then we, he moves out, get everything he wants, and then he spends all his money. Imagine spending all your money. And then, and then after you spend all your money, there, there comes a famine up on the land. That, that becomes a plague up on the land. So that, uh, even, even the, uh, the food that you have and that you used to have, you don't have that no more. And so imagine, when, like we walk into HEBs and, and, and when the, first, the pandemic first hit, there was hardly anything on the shelf because everybody's scared. Yeah. Nobody wants to be without. All the paper towels are gone. All the lights are is gone. All this is gone because everybody lives in fear. And now the prodigal son is like, I had it good at home. 
I had it good at home. I, I had the money I needed, I, but I wanted it all to myself. But now the prodigal son is eating pig, e eating with the pigs in the slop. He's, he's eating everything from the slop. But then just like a true father, his father allows him to come home. And that's what God is trying to tell us today. Come home. Come see me. I, and the, all of America, don't worry about the president. Come home to me. Quit worrying about what he's doing. He's just a man. He can, he can give him power and he can take away power. Man is only temporary. Everything that we're going through is only temporary. We struggle in life because we put all our faith in man and not in God. But God isn't going to just bless us and cure us during this pandemic. He's going to bless us and heal our mind. He's going to give us better health in our bodies. He's going to, he's going to help us get through all our situations. And then you know how we are. But God, I got prostate cancer. God, I got lung cancer. God, I got arthritis. God, I got a tumor in my body. And the Lord said, by his stripes. <laughs> I am healed. Uh, you are healed and God said, I got you. I, I got you and I'm making you feel better. God, God I feel my health coming on. God, but I got a better financial situation. My house is, is, is getting better. I got a new car. I got food in my pantry. God said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He, he said, I, I, I want to bless y'all marriages. I want to take away depression. I want to take away suicidal thoughts. I even want to feed the homeless. And God said, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. He said, I want to make sure that my families are reconnected. Make sure the churches are reunited. God said, just wait, people of God. I, I, got, a, I got a plan for you. All you got to do is just what? Trust me and never die. And I surely, I surely, I surely bring you out. God will help us. Even through plagues and devastation, God will help us. God will help us just like anybody else, but we can't be like the prodigal son and just take up everything we got and, and leave the people that, that, that are in need out there. Mm -hmm. We got to share these things. Share your love. Share your thoughts. Pray with somebody. Call somebody you ain't talked to in a long time and tell them you love them. God has a plan for all of us. Listen to what he's saying and, 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 then, and then understand that, that the day of the Lord is coming. What is your judgment day going to look like? What is your life going to look like after this is over with? Are you going to spend it eternally with the Heavenly Father? Or are you going to spend it in hell with, with unresting souls that are crying out, I should have been, I should have did right. I should have did this when I was younger. Everybody don't get a second chance. Some people die saying, I'm going to go get my life changed. I'm going back to church next week and they don't make it to the next week. But what is your day, judgment day going to look like? What is your life going to look like? We, we can have all the attitudes and, and, and all these things that we want. But God says if, if we fix them right now, he can heal us. Mm -hmm. He wants to heal the land. He, he wants to free us from the pandemic. And so that he don't have to send a swarm of locusts. So he don't have to send a swarm of birds. So he don't have to send a swarm of frogs to take us out. Because a lot of us would make it if he sent a bunch of locusts and, and a bunch of frogs and a bunch of these things. We wouldn't make it. Trust God through all this pandemic. Trust God through everything we're going through so that we don't have to uh, feed with the pigs. So that we don't have to uh, uh, sit here and wonder if God is really listening. Yes, he's hearing you. Trust him. Trust him through all your situation and believe that he's going to bring us through. May God bless you and may God keep you.